All right. All right, so Squire Lucian for House Starkwater. And uh, um, like I said, the way I like to start this is give me your full title and everything, lineage and house information and whatnot. So go for it. Uh, I'm Sir Glong of Tarndor. I was knighted by Sir Deverin, who was knighted by Sir Owen, who was knighted by Finn, who, Sir Finn, who was, hmm. knighted, who was knighted by Queen Rain. Of uh, Gwynedd. Awesome. Uh, I think that's the most uh, <laughs> most most lineage I've gotten so far. That's awesome. Yeah, it's one of the require. It's one of the requirements you have to learn. Yeah. For a knighthood, is you have to know your full lineage. Awesome. So we try and include that in everything. Um, lineage is kind of important for us. Yeah. So our house is Windhaven, mm-hmm. which is one of the oldest houses in um, Gwynedd. Mm-hmm. And that's where our lineage originated from. So from the kingdom of Gwynedd, started with Queen Rain, yeah. and then from there on forward. So that sounds awesome. Yeah. So I mean, you, you said the house was actually House Windhaven. So I, I know you guys had ties to Gwynedd in that way. So I mean, for Sir Graf, for for the the you know the Knights of Torndor and everything, do you, do you like to associate yourself, or or you put your foot forward for Torndor versus Gwynedd? Or um, I'm definitely a knight of Torndor, but my family is from Gwynedd, so oh, I do okay. consider myself a Windhaven. Okay. Um, you know, my I give my full name. It's Glom Windhaven Hainer. Okay. So, you know, I'm definitely a Windhaven. Whenever the House Windhaven calls to fight, yeah, I show up with my blue and white. Yeah. And I, you know, I go over to fight with them. Oh, that's cool, man. That's yeah. Cool. So I, I I think I've seen pictures and video, but so so what's your personal like, colors and 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 like My heraldry? My personal heraldry is a um, half blue, half green field with a uh, white chevron. Awesome. So what does that? Uh, why did you pick that? So the colors of Tarandor are green and black, and then the colors of House Windhaven are blue and white. Okay. So I took them from my realm in my house. Yeah. And um, those are the two colors I picked to represent. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome man. And then the white was like, so Order of Torn was silver. So yeah. heraldically, when you use silver as a reference, you use white. Yeah. So and then House Windhaven, same thing. They use a white dove. Yeah. So I was incorporated, trying to incorporate everything I could. Yeah, that sounds great, man. Awesome. So I mean, do you currently have any squares? Um, right now, I have Brynia is my squire, and me and Fikes are looking towards squire. Awesome, man. So, so I mean, um, asking this of, of of other knights and whatnot, what what are some qualities, or what 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 helps you decide what uh, who who maybe approaches you about knighthood or anything like? What what do you like to look for in the squires that that you take on? Um, the way I kind of see it is. I don't really, like, look for a squire, per se. Sure. But, you know, sometimes the relationship, I feel like, buds up. Yeah. You know, you talk between a person, you yeah. learn that you're helping them helping them grow, and then it develops into squirehood, I feel like. I don't really feel like I've ever gone out and said, oh, well, that guy, you know, I want him to be my squire because yeah. he has these, at, you know, these attributes or anything like that. I really just developed a bond between a person, and then it was kind of like, hey, I respect you, okay. and I'd like to learn from you. Okay. You know, is that something that we could do? And it's like, yeah, you know, you're my friend. You're someone who I see has, like, a drive. We've yeah. been working together a little bit. This is something I could see blossoming okay. rather than, like, going and picking, like, out a flower. It's something that grows. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Um, so what? What do you have any uh, specific kind of requirements or anything? Are you much more freeform with, with how your program ends up so blossoming? The way that <laughs> we do it is I have a set of requirements, and yeah. it's definitely a list. You know, these are things that I want to see accomplished, but in no means is it a checklist. Okay. You know what I mean? There's no means that, oh, I have to do this click, 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 click. It's yeah. something that develops over time and something that you're supposed to learn. You know, the skills that we come out here with are in a similar sense of martial art. Yeah. So, you know, now learning all the fine attributes of a martial art isn't just like, oh, well, I learned how to throw this punch. I learned how to do this. You know, it's a lot of study and a lot of reading and things that you don't normally think of when you think of fighting sure but if you want to reach that next level you have to think of it in a different aspect you have to really look at all the things that go into fighting muscle mechanics and yeah. you know how your body moves stuff like that but also we're playing a fantasy game so i try to incorporate things that i i make my squires read tolkien because <laughs> we're playing a tolkien based game you know yeah. we should know the world that we play in at least one book hey it can be the hobbit but at least you have an idea of the world that we're supposed to be in Sure, that sounds great. Do you? I know that. Uh, I know Dev 
definitely has reading requirements that are that are not Tolkien. So do you do you hold true to those? Do you have any I, things that? So when Dev squared me, he made me read. I had to read um, the Book of Five Rings. I had to read Art of War. I had to read the Tao of Jukundo, and I had to read Medieval Swordsmanship. I can't remember the name of the author yeah. offhand. Um, the Tao of Jukundo and Medieval Swordsmanship are great books. I really don't feel that they translate to foam fighting as much. Sure. So I took those off. I still make my squires read um, the the uh, Book of Five Rings, which I feel like is a great book in life. And, you know, if you can read it, take it to foam fighting. Any kind of fighting, really. It's just the mentality and the mindset yeah. based on, like, definitely helped me tons. Um, I make them read Art of War. Uh, Sun Tzu just really knows what he's talking about. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's been around forever. Right. And same thing. I feel like it's not just something in foam fighting, but in life and anything like that. It teaches you how to prioritize things and teaches you how to kind of think a different way. Yeah. Look at situations not necessarily for what they are and can be taken from a different perspective. How, how much do you look for your squires to, to, instead of, you know, like you said, developing the martial arts, I mean, I mean, you know, it's a, what, the stereotypical trading on a mountain kind of spiritual mm -hmm. journey. I mean, how much do you feel like that actually holds true? I, I found personally, like, I feel like they they coincide very much. I do, too. Um, through my squireship, I definitely grew a lot, not only in my sword fighting, but in my, like, day-to-day -day life. Yeah. You know, having a drive and having a purpose and something that you want to better yourself for really helped me out in my day to day yeah. knowing you know oh well, I gotta make sure I get this done or that done because I need to be able to do this thing because I want to keep getting better Yeah, you know what I mean so I worked a little harder I you know made sure that I was on time to things because not only at that time did I want to show up on time to like dork stuff stuff like that but I want to make sure I was on time so I could leave on time Yeah, <laughs> you know what I right. mean so I feel like the, the squireship works like an integral part with your day-to-day -day life and that you definitely should grow and honestly like every night that I respect and I see when I've seen them in their squirehood I feel like they've also kind of grown up a little bit with it you know what I mean yeah. and like t grown a little serious or in not only the game but in real life too this is awesome do you have do you have any uh, time constraints I have a two-year minimum okay um but again it's a minimum not a maximum right so yeah everybody's different kind of yeah, you know, at least two years, but, you know, some people put in more. Yeah. You know, there, I know that there's been people who have taken, um, so obviously, like, knighthood is its own thing, but, like, I know people who have been sword brothered for six, seven years. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, I don't know that many knights, but You're right. it does happen, so, yeah. you know, I mean, it's all about the progression with the person. Sure. It's all individual-based, I feel like, when it comes so to do, So, do you, do you like to come up with challenges for the individual person, because... I mean, of who they are and what challenges they face in their own life. Definitely, because everything is a case-to-case -case basis. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Not everyone is going to have trouble throwing this shot or that shot even right. when it comes down to that. But someone may struggle with it for a couple weeks. Or someone may, you know, just get the shots done perfect, but has a hard time teaching someone. Sure. And I feel like, you know, that's a big part of knighthood too. Yeah. So, it's different aspects. You see what someone struggles with and try and mold the foundation around them. Okay. So, uh, just on yourself, not really of, of maybe Torndor or Windhaven or anything like that, what, what would you say are um, definitely virtues of a knight for you personally? Um, I feel like you need to be a shining example of honor. Yeah. I feel like, you know, not only does taking hits but giving hits, making sure that you're a guy out there that's not, you know, throwing light hits and yeah. calling everybody around. You know, you yeah. got to make sure you're playing the game at the highest point that you can yeah you know all the time because you're supposed to be a shining example of what is supposed to be the best in the game yeah you know you may not be the best fighter but you're out there swinging stick every day you know yeah. that you're out and freaking hitting as hard as you can and yeah <laughs> playing the game like it's supposed to be played you know i feel like people want to go to that person and be like hey you know he may not be the best fighter yeah. but he's playing like he's going yeah you know i feel like you have to have you should be a shining example of every standard of the game. You should have at least, like, great garb, mm -hmm. you know, good weapons. You should be able to make everything. Okay. So, I've tried to put myself towards that, and I feel like taking on Squires has helped me better myself in that aspect because 
when I have someone that I'm supposed to be teaching that comes out with this sweet thing, you right. know what I mean? <laughs> so it pushes me to be better too in that kind of aspect. Yeah, I had my interview with Tyrion and he said that he, he greatly valued this, this idea that not only should the knight be teaching the squire or pushing the squire to be better, but, but he wanted the squire to help him evolve as, 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 e uh, as equally as much. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you grow with everyone. You know, even if it's something is learning, I'm a very impatient person. Yeah. And I have, like, a very short fuse. So, for me, when I'm trying to teach something and, you know, some people don't get it, and usually I just blow that kind of person off. <laughs> like, oh, well, if you don't get it, I can't teach it. Yeah. But with a squire, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't tell my person, you know, yeah. I mean, oh, well, I can't teach you that. That's too bad. So, I have to change. Sure. That sounds... <laughs> All right. So, hmm. what what amounts of service in any aspect of the of the game or the world or anything do you do you have or do you look for or so, at, at all? Do you? Um, I definitely want you to be out there, Harold. I feel like the biggest difference in service you can make. I really don't like pushing people into realm leadership. Yeah. Um, I feel like. For my experience and like what I've seen, I feel like it makes people be forced to do something that they may not or may or may not even be interested in, and it kind of puts a bad taste. Like I have to do this, not necessarily sure. that it's something that I want to do or wish to do. Yeah. And I kind of don't want to do that. I don't want to make you do something that you really don't want to do. Sure. And something that honestly, when I did it, put a really bad taste in my mouth and made me want to leave the game for a little bit. Because there's a lot of unappreciative people and people want to say things and stuff like that. So yeah. I feel like realm leadership is a is kind of a forced position that I really don't like. But I want to see you out there heralding, checking weapons. Sure. You know, hey, if it's bring in guys bottles of water while you're sitting down. Like, yeah. You know, help out your team. Help out. Be a shining example yeah. of what you're supposed to be. Like, yeah. Be the best that you can, really. I want to see you helping people. If you see, knocked a guy down and yeah. he looks like he's a little stunned, yeah, sure, like, you might get a woo, but, like, help him up. You know yeah. what I mean? I want to see you helping other people. So if you kill a guy ten times and he's getting frustrated and angry, I want you to pull him to the side. Yeah. And, like, talk to him. Be like, hey, man, look, this is what you're doing and this yeah. is what I'm doing. Yeah. So I feel like service not only includes, you know, being part of a security team or being part of a herald. Service to the game is helping everyone that you can. Yeah. You know, if you see a guy struggling, help him. And that's, you know, you just made that guy's day better. He's going to make someone else's day better. It's all going to chain down. But just because you say service, service doesn't mean necessarily that the event needs your help, but an uh, individual may need your help. Yeah. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks for, uh, I know you didn't really want to do the recorded thing, yeah, but cool. but thanks, you. thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate it, Colin. Yeah, Lucy. Yeah, man. Happy I could help. Oh, man. man. It's nice and warm in the car. I don't want to leave. Mm -hmm.